It's uh, such an honor to be here um, speaking on behalf of faith and freedom. Most of you all that have heard of me at all have heard of me from my uh, football career. I am from Florence, Kentucky, uh, and uh, I went to uh, Boone County High School. And there I broke almost every high school record there could be in high school. And, um, and this thing called ESPN that was new in the 90s followed me around. And, uh, and I became Mr. Football and went on to be an All-American and went on to uh, play college football at the University of Alabama, Roll Tide. Don't be nervous. We're not taking over yet. While I was in Kentucky about to leave for Alabama, my mom, who uh, was a great golly woman, said a couple of things to me I'll never forget. Sean, I know you love the Lord. You represent him well everywhere you go. You bring his presence into every room and every locker room that you go in. I kept that, that posture. I kept that standard. My father, who had uh, nine kids from four different women, was still trying to figure out life he did something really amazing. He never called me Sean. He never called me Sean Alexander. Even now I get called Mr. Alexander. Cool title. Um, but he always called me champion. Whether I won or whether I lost, whether it was an A on the test or whether it was a B minus, that's about what we're going to get. <laughs> I need to be reminded that I was a champion. So I went on to Alabama, and in my freshman year, I had one of the best college games in Alabama history, 291 yards and four touchdowns against LSU. Is anybody from Louisiana out here? <laughs> I went on and left Alabama with almost every record there was in Alabama history, and I went on out to Seattle and played in the pros for the Seattle Seahawks. There on the first day in Seattle, I met the most gorgeous girl I've ever seen in my life. She was on fire for Jesus, which made her even more attractive. And we just celebrated our 17th year anniversary. <laughs> Seattle was cool. I uh, became the first person to ever have 1,100 yards rushing and 15 touchdowns or more in five years in a row and it cap got capped at my f that last fifth year with 28 touchdowns in one season and taking our team to the Super Bowl. And that year I won the NFL MVP. <laughs> All of those things um, were amazing and fun and I'm thankful, but Football is not where my greatest title came from, and it's not the greatest accomplishment that I've ever had. The greatest title I've ever had, and I will ever have, is being called a child of God. A lover of Jesus, a follower of Jesus. You can go through all the locker rooms I had in high school, college, or and even in the pros, and there was one thing that was similar. It was very okay. Matter of fact, it was accepted and even more, more and more uh, strong for you to be a person that had a Bible in our locker rooms and people praying after practice. That is the power when you actually know who you are. Now with that, I've been given the wonderful assignment this morning to tell you all about something that's dear to my heart. Um, and I'm gonna tell you a little secret, don't tell everybody, but my wife and I, we are pregnant with our 11th child. Yes, all of ours, ours, no mix, after marriage, we kept it Jesus-led, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord, glory. Uh, we, uh, I've been retired for 10 years, and I have, 
uh, nine wonderful years in the NFL, and in these 10 years, I've been able to partner with some amazing groups, whether it was to teaching about faith or loving people and discipling people, whether it was about family. Um, I'm a vice president for parentalrights.org, uh, and I've and, uh, been in many great, the fatherhood, uh, faith-based initiative with even the White House. I've been a part of some really cool things. And even now, uh, helping poverty and impacting communities uh, with a group like Stand Together. So I've been a part of some really cool things. But today, I know I'm supposed to give you all a little snippet about the power of fatherhood. And I want to just say this really quickly. Fatherhood gives you the ability to do these four great things in every child. Give them an identity, create a standard, give direction, and be a launching pad. Like I told you, my dad did several things that would not have glorified Jesus at all, at all, at all. But he did give me an identity. He let me know that champions they're champions whether the scoreboard says they won or lost. There's something in fathers today that if they do that right, there's something in parents today, if they do that right, they set the identity. There's something in leaders, if they give the people up under them the correct identity, they will be champions whether the scoreboard says they're winning or losing. I was thinking about Genesis 1 and 126. God said, let us make man in our own image. Let's give him dominion. Let's make him be fruitful and multiply. There's identity, there's standard, there's direction. It all comes from God. If we actually could grab some understanding of the power that we have to the next generation of setting a true identity, a true standard, and some true direction for where we want to go and where we need to go, our country is going to be amazing. You know, I think of identity, it's really simple. My son walks into this, uh, he played a basketball game and he's playing against his friends, he's 10 loving to death. I had three girls and, and then we had the boys. And he lost the game and everybody knows he loves to win. He's walking, he's feeling down, he walks into the house and, and uh, the, his little brother Justice says, hey, Joseph, you gonna be all right? He says, yeah, I'm good. He said, why you feel so good about it? I'm still the prince of this house. <laughs> Something about that I loved. My son has this understanding that his identity is not what the scoreboard says. His identity is in Christ. He was fearfully and wonderfully made. There's a standard that he has when he lives his life, a standard all our kids have. All of us that say we love Jesus, there's a higher standard that we can have. And it is to love God and love people and hate the sin that's in our own lives. Jesus has given us all the ability to be a launching pad off of him and create us all to be a launching pad for other people. I get to disciple people all over this country and, um, and really encourage them in their faith, encourage them to be excellent at what they're doing. And we just won't stop. It's what children of God do. We represent the king and we bring others to him to, so they can represent the king. I took my oldest three daughters up to Baltimore to the National Aquarium last week, and uh, dolphins were cool, and sharks, they were cool. I was amazed by the jellyfish. It just floats. Currents push it all around. That was amazing to me because I figured out that they eat meat. They're carnivores. What? These fish were somehow being moved into other bodies of water they'd never been in, and they were wiping out entire species of fish. How could something that can't move unless the current takes it wipe out an entire species? 
So I did some research and I realized that these jellyfish that are getting pushed into other parts of the water, they float and they land on the eggs that the parents have left. Enough of jellyfish get there, they land on the eggs, they wipe out an entire species. Parents, fathers, leaders. We want to protect the next generation. If we want to protect the next generation and we want to protect our country, keep the family strong. Thank you.